Hello, my name is Carol Flavin. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I made a factory or manufacturing area on my layout. I'm a railway modeller and my layout is called the Edge Hay and Strines Railway. Made for and with my grandchildren, a lot of it during lockdown. The space that I allocated for the factory wasn't actually particularly big because it behind it there is a series of railway arches with shops in and a buttressed retaining wall. Up on the top of that, there is a track that goes all the way around the layout. Down below it and behind the factory, there is another lower level track that goes all the way around the layout. And there is a station that feeds the uh, factory. And then I also put in a siding that runs to the factory with an engine shed. This was made largely with Metcalf buildings, which I heavily weathered, named, added all sorts of other aspects to them, including some lighting. So I'm going to show you how I did this, and I'll also show you how I weathered these buildings, and I hope you enjoy it. The Metcalf factory buildings are some that I have acquired or made quite early on and they appeared in an article in Railway Modeler in May 2020. When I added them to the new slightly smaller space on the Edge Hay and Strines Railway version 2, I wanted to add the factory buildings and to make them look weathered, almost grungy. So in this section, I'm going to show you how I painted them. This was the pristine building in the first place, and I painted part of it already there with a wash of grey paint. Mix of grey acrylic paint and a bit of extra water. Once the grey wash was dry, I used black weathering powders with a very stiff, quite old brush. And I just brushed it in to start with, working my way across the whole of the building. And then I used a piece of cloth and my finger and wiped it down so that it became a bit more uneven looking. And then just to finish it off, to get rid of all the excess, I blew it a couple of times. This is the building finished with the pigments in front of it. And this is what it looks like overall. Once it's dry, I spray it with hairspray to set it so that it, you don't get dirty when you touch it. I said before that this wasn't a very big space and you can see where it is in front of the railway arches and the arched supporting wall that holds the track above it. Here I'm creating a sort of cobbled look on some wallpaper that I stuck down in that space. And I use a mix of gray, darker gray, lighter gray, pale gray. I rub some of it in. The whole intention is to make the surface look like cobblestones and a bit uneven. But I did start off in the first place with some wallpaper that I picked up. The wallpaper was embellished. But here I'm moving the camera just a bit closer so you can see what the surface looks like. In this speeded up section, you can see me laying out all the items that I wanted to include in this factory area. And it was my first attempt to make sure that what was there was what I actually wanted. This sequence is a short video of what it looks like now it's finished. Bottoms Yard is named after our part of our layout from when we were the Loco ladies. We go past the station, past the barrier and some buildings that are by the entrance. On the right there, there is a motor repair garage area. And there are a number of factory buildings, all of which are named after various members of my family. Lots of movement, lots of activity, canopies, vehicles, there's a couple of boyer houses, and this shot 
is a very similar shot to the one before, but this is done at night because I actually lit the area because I like lighting my layout and I felt that this was particularly successful. Peeping over the top to one of the railway arches and one of the shops in it, which is Holtz Wine Merchants, which is my daughter and son-in-law's. Back, past some of the windows, past the canopy, past the boiler house, which has got a flashing red light in it. In the background, you can see the church. There's the castle, which is lit. And we're just panning across to see some of the village, which is Edge Village, which I've also lit. And I did really enjoy lighting all of these areas. Those of you that have previously watched some of my videos will know that I really enjoy running a camera train around my layout. And I actually designed the whole layout so that it looked interesting at a camera train level. Here are a few shots from my camera train running along the front of the factory, along the siding and out onto the mainline track. And I've just run it a little bit further towards a set of tunnels. Here we are with the camera turned inwards, going past the station and actually round the back of the factory area. And here's a final shot running along the other track that runs right through past the station, past the factory buildings, past the arches, past the girder bridge and out onto the mainline track. If you've been looking closely, you might have noticed that there seemed to be a burning factory on the left hand side. That's what I intended it to be. It's a model that I broke apart a bit and I added some flickering flames inside it for a bit of fun. I'm just going to show you one or two further shots. This is another picture of the factory. This is a locomotive drawing into the station. Another one with a diesel and some wagons behind it in front of the factory. And a final shot, because I like it, of the train running into the station. I hope you enjoyed that. The retaining wall and the arches are a separate video and I explain how I made those and put them together and I hope you enjoy watching that at some other time as well. This factory building is quite small and intense because there's a lot going on in it but my grandchildren really like to play with it so there are lots of vehicles, lots of figures, lots going on so I hope you did find some of what I've talked about here useful. I'm sure I'll speak to you again. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.